it's scary to give more gas. Sorry for my language. Good morning. While we're here in Bishop, I slept in. I did not. I have not gotten up yet. I'm about to, now that it's broken 10 degrees outside. I think it's around 13 or 14 now. So that's okay. Last night, it got down to 6 degrees or 4 degrees at one point, And boy, it was cold. I remembered partway through the evening, oh, hey, you got your motorcycle jacket hanging outside. Why is it hanging out there? When you could lay it underneath you as a layer of insulation for the cold coming through. And so I got up again <laughs> and went and got that jacket, laid it underneath here. I wonder if you can actually see it. So the jacket's here, spread out. The jacket's laid out underneath, puts another layer from the cold, from underneath. Not from above, from underneath. And I've got sweaters wrapped around my feet. Got another sweater around my hip area. And I kept waking up, you know, gotta chill, gotta shake it off a little bit, get the blood flowing. I gotta tell you, it gives you a different, per <clears throat> a different perspective on, on other people out there, you know, like, like the homeless. Holy shit, man. No wonder they're drinking and having substance abuse. It's to kill the pain. Maybe not. But maybe. Anyways, it gives me a little insight. I'm obviously not a big mountaineer camping guy, or I don't have the right equipment for these kind of temperatures. Um, but I got what I got, and that's how it's going to be. Today, I'm going to make it off to Lone Pine, and that's going to be on the California Backcountry Discovery Route, or BDR. And so this morning, we will pack all this up and get going. Well, you just got to figure this. Of all the places I could pull into last night, I pick one right next to that power box so that I could plug stuff in. And I, I didn't think much of it. I'm thinking, oh, big open field. Nice. Oh, sun in the morning. Sure. What did I do? I planted myself beside the biggest tree and it causes this massive shadow and shade. And so, yes, it is still very cool here in the shade. Yet in the sun, it's warm. So that whole thing could have been cooking up a little bit here, at least for an hour. Maybe I'll be grateful uh, when I'm tearing it down that I'm not sweating so much. But for now, I'm going to get me some breakfast and then I'll do a tear down and uh, we can show that all for you. All right. And that is our tent setup. I had to redo it. Wow, a number of times. So what did I learn? Was that this piece here right here from here to here has to be very short so you have to tie it off like really close the post almost vertical makes most of the weight and distribution go down into the ground and that makes less uh, tension going into those straps now that's not really the big issue but again I have to do it on this side too I have to make sure that this is short uh, so that there is less chance for sag because I did this four times last night uh, four times and every time I did it I thought oh I'm good and then 
after about two or three minutes, the sag will get in and I'm laying on the ground. Well, that's not going to be very useful for me. Uh, so, so now the deal is keep it short here, keep it short there, and you can stay off the ground all night. All right, I decided why fight nature? It's warmer in the sun. I'm going to eat my breakfast here in the warm rather than over there in the frosty cold. What I need to eat are things that won't travel well on the backcountry road. And that means I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have an avocado, which I totally love. Blueberries, cause they'll just get shaken up and there'll be blueberry juice for sure. Blueberries and avocado, that's my normal breakfast at home. And a banana. Starting to get a little warmer, that's nice. I'm going to need a knife. All right, let's get ourselves situated here. The spoon is for the avocado, and so is the knife. What kind of avocado did we get? Normally I put salt on it. I've, I've discovered that <clears throat> Doing this backcountry trip can be healthier because I don't carry salt with me. So that's gotta be better for my health. Of course, the salt and vinegar chips I've been eating. Well, I haven't had those for a while. Those are not very healthy. All right, for those of you who asked, how do I charge up when I get to a hotel? I will show you. And it just happens that I'm at this campground and there is a power box here. So I'll show you how that all works. Very first thing is you gotta have a plug-in, right? Follow the wire. And we come to this little box, which is great. So basically it has six USB ports for one plug-in, which is great. And then, so let's go through this. Uh, basically, I've got three batteries that I can use while I'm on the road. Uh, basically, right now they're getting charged, but what you can do is change the wire out, put the USB in here, and run that to your phone or to whatever device that you need, like my, my Garmin or whatever, right? Okay, so three of those get charged. I get uh, my earbuds charged up so that uh, when I'm doing video editing, or making a phone call. I can actually hear people with all the other background eliminated. Uh, the other thing I have is a charging unit. So this can charge three batteries. These are for the uh, Insta360. 60% of the videos and pictures are taken on this. And then the iPhone is the other one. Next, I found invaluable was this tiny little flashlight. My dad uh, actually found it. He was curious, he asked me a question about it. And I gotta say, this thing has been a, just a lifesaver inside the tent, it's so tiny, but really bright and uh, portable. So I hold it, point it at things, uh, hang it in the tent. And um, so it's a lifesaver. So I like to charge that up, light's green, so it's fully charged. I have this other light and um, this one here, and this is like a mega light, like it is really good work light. Now here is the first time that I've actually taken it out. I've used it, but I've never tried to charge it. And what I discovered today was right there, that little port, it's got an issue because the housing around it, this, uh, the black plastic around it, you know, this big piece here is too high in set, too close. So many times I try to put a, anytime I try to plug one of these USB micro ports in, it gets stopped because, you know, on the edge of the, at the edge of the, um, this isn't a, um, but you know, this black piece here, this thing, these tabs aren't long enough to get into, to get into that and to recharge it. So now this is going to have a limited life or I'm going to have to take one of my USB cables, micro cables, make a USB with a micro charger on it, take a knife to it and cut that housing away so it'll fit inside there. So, you know, I'm piggybacking so I can get, you know, six, uh, seven, eight. I can get nine things charged at once here, all from one plug-in, and that's super important. And that 
is how you recharge your stuff when you have a plug-in. And then whenever one, any one of these are full, you can take it out, put something else on, and charge it up so you can actually do a recharge really quick. Uh, this is one view of the mountains from my camping spot. That would be facing west. And then all the way to the other side, there's another set of mountains over here. And then the fairgrounds. All right, we're gonna do a tear down of the uh, Hennessy hammock with the tents of poles and the whole camp set up. She's gotta go down, because we gotta get out of here. So basically you got a little got a little button here. You push the button in and it slides. Just like that. That is the clothing bag and that's everything for six months to eight months. I think it's too much but can I may pare it down. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard when you have the cold nights and you're grateful you have the extra piece. I'll tell you that. Up. All right that's it. That's the whole that's the whole deal. Right it was there. nice and relaxing. Did a repacking. I am leaving the fairgrounds at Bishop, California, but I am starting late. It is one o'clock already. All right, we are heading to Lone Pine. Well, this is where the off-road or less asphalt starts <laughs> to no asphalt. All right, this is the um, California BDR section seven, going from Bishop to Lone Pine, Be going down that road along these mountains. And you're in this valley between all of these other mountains. It's beautiful in here. Side of Bishop, and so far it's a pretty nice road. There were some people uh, setting up to do paragliding. Whoa, get that wrong. And uh, so the road has got uh, pretty packed gravel, uh, but every once in a while you get these patches of sand like this. And you gotta let the bike go and let it float. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go here. I'll go this way. I guess, I guess it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> over that way, over this way. There's some big ruts. Cross, I imagine. Oh, this looks like a more, this looks like a more major road. Oh, there's sand. Well, I didn't think I'd come across this, but there's a whole bunch of these 
And I mean like many. So in this area, there are tons of these satellite dishes. Cool. Very cool. All right. I started this series with UFO. It's now. Geez, are these guys searching that? Well, to give you an idea of how many satellites are out here, check that out. That is really cool. Just when you think you're done. All right, National Radio Observatory. This is used by Caltech. at Big Pine and it's about 217 man it's cooking hot right now which is okay better than cold and I just decided I'm stopping in for some water and a little snack and uh, so that I'm not dumber <laughs> dehydrated just leaving Big Pine Thumb joint. Ow. Son of a. Really, you didn't need to do that. Ow, 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 ow. Okay. story here. Keep going, I guess. Let's see how this thumb works out. Pose myself. Let's get at it. It's a bit scary to give more gas. Sorry for my language. <sighs> exactly what I talked about. Here it is. Going through here. Super soft stuff. All right. I got to take the helmet off. There's no way I'm going to lift that thing.
All right. Bike's loaded. I'd like to get on that left side there. I gotta get enough speed. No, you don't. Don't dig in. Just enough. Come on. Come on, be my friend. Be my friend. There we go. You're my friend. Taking the hard side, I swear to God. Get in there. Almost dumped it. Thank you, who's ever who's ever watching out for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes! Okay. That's hard work. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, rocks about your fist size with a lot of sand. And holy smokes, that's hard. All right, so I just came up, I guess, Birch Trailhead through the back there. It's very beautiful. It's hot, you really need water. Yeah, the lone pine, and I'm gonna have vegetable chow. <laughs> Anyways, I found a place where I think I can set up a camp later. I didn't want to go through all the hassle of going to the grocery store and all that, so that's what I did. Here I am. Oh, that's a pretty nice fortune cookie, isn't it? There we go. All right, I am just outside of Lone Pine. And I've opted to sleep in my hammock with two trees. I'm about 10 blocks from the main highway. Well, what a stellar day today. Uh, very late start uh, getting out of Bishop. I uh, finally got out uh, after shower, packing, all that kind of stuff, showing you how to do the poles. Uh, got on the BDR. I got about halfway today and I dumped it. Would you know that kills a lot of time and energy and that, because I started late so I said to myself okay if I hit a a good road I'm going to take it down to the main road because I'm running out of time and so then um that's what I did and I ended up here in Lone Pine um yeah I went for some Chinese food Ooh, I think where I'm at is going to be full of bugs excellent that's it that was uh, just a nice easy uh, and fun day. Hey, if you like today's show, give it a thumbs up. Uh, click that bell so that you get notified when new shows come out. Subscribe so you're on our list. Um, hey, share it with some friends. There's a little share thing. You can share it with friends if you think it's interesting or they might like it. Maybe they like adventure. Maybe they like uh, camping. Maybe they like motorcycling. Maybe they want to see what 
the country looks like from Canada down to Ushuaia. Anyways, also leave some messages for me. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, appreciate the comments that I've been getting so far. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, what else can we say? But uh, call to ride will continue. Thank you very much. Have a great evening or day or whatever it is when you're watching.